Another thing we get asked a lot is how do you, does machine have an arpeggiator? You know, so I think this will be a good one to kind of show that. So let's see, maybe we'll, uh, I'm gonna go back to my trusty um, all purpose device here. And this is probably one of the, the, the best investments I've made in my setup, actually, because it's so flexible. I can do so many things with it. But so I'm going to get out of that. I'll close this one. And now I'm going to go to, let's try, we'll do Step Polyart. So this is, this is made by another of the, the same company. And what this one does is, is let me play all types of different um, just arpeggiated melodies and you can go in and kind of move the notes around and you can mess with the modulation and the volume and aftertouch of the notes and all the different stuff. So I'm gonna maybe, maybe we'll find like a lead sound or something and see if we can build up something with that. So let's go in here and probably a massive again. Let's see if we can find like a lead, a synth lead. And we just want something maybe soft and yeah, we'll just do something like this one here. Yeah, no, that one that one sounds a little too close to my pad. Well, something really plain. So again, just to show you how that works. And of course, I can go in there and if I want to put in my tempo, I know I'm at what, uh, 131. So I'm going to do 131. And I can get it exact because you guys know I tap tempo. So I'll say 131 point, what is that, 86? So 131.86, I'm done and I'm good to go. Oh, I didn't say, I didn't hit done. There we go. 131.86, point. Eight, six. Oh, I think I have it synced. That's what I did. I think I set it to sync. And so, here we go. Oh, oh, yeah. And there's the tap tempo too. So, it's got tap tempo in there. And you can just adjust it that way as well. So, lots of different ways to do it. And we'll just go in here and get it down to 131. That's a little fast because I kind of play again. I, I had my tempo high, but I kind of played it in double time, really. And this one, this one also has a lot of presets as well. So you got presets. I can go in and say if I want something basic. Now, me personally, I'm more of a chord guy than an arpeggiator person just because just because of the type of music I make. But again, I want to just show you lots of different ways that you can use this stuff. And you got you got control over the groove and everything, so. So yeah, some cool stuff there. I think I'm getting some feedback from probably the, what I'm gonna do is do this. So I don't need that right now. So I bet if I record that, it won't make that noise. I'm getting some kind of feedback somewhere in there, um, either with the preset itself or just the machine uh, MIDI. But again, we're gonna see if we can record this into the track, just so you can see that it actually records that in there. And I'm gonna pull up my arranger so I can look at my pattern. Again, um, if you wanna see your pattern that you're working on directly on the controller, you just go to arrange, you can go into the pattern and you'll see it in there. So uh, let's see if we can put this in and see if it actually records that feedback or not. Cause I don't, I'm not sure what, what's going on with that, but. I don't like that. I'm going to see if it's a different sound. Yeah, that's probably it. Yeah, we'll 
we'll go back and try that other one. There we go. That's why I was holding it in the beginning. You're right. I forgot. So let's, well, let's see if we can come up with some type of arpeggiator for this. And remember, I can go in, I can latch this just to listen to it. see it because it was down a little bit lower but if you go down there all those notes are in there exactly how the arpeggiator played it you can see them right there you can see one of them the way I started it kind of got off over there I could go in and um, quantize it I'm gonna just leave it alone and again now we're gonna save something else so now I can save this MIDI I'm gonna just say uh, export MIDI and this one's gonna be our arpeggiator so I'm gonna go to my MIDI and now I'm gonna say um, stuck ARP since we got stuck there for a little bit and that's what I'm going to name it question yeah um, can you if the window is a little bit smaller you could just use drag MIDI and drag it out to your desktop yeah, or yeah that's what I mentioned earlier yeah, yeah yeah you can just uh, if like if I wanted to just drag it out I can go over here and just drag this MIDI and it would just put my pattern, I can either put it right there or I can put it where, but when you drag the MIDI, it's gonna be named um, whatever the MIDI is that you're dragging. So this one's gonna be named Southern Girl because that's the name of the sound that I'm dragging the MIDI from. When you export, you have more control over the name of the MIDI file. So that's usually why I go to export, but it's the same thing. I can drag it there and it's gonna be right there or I can put it in my MIDI file. And again, if I go back over and go into my favorites, it is gonna be there. So we can clear this out. If I go back in here, see there's that one that's just in the folder, but if I wanna go into, there's stuck ARP, and it's in there. So again, if you like arpeggiated sounds and you, you, you really can't find a way to use your favorite arpeggiated plugin inside a machine just due, just due to the way the MIDI routes. Because you can route MIDI between pads, but it doesn't route from the plugin. It's just the actual pad notes that are getting routed. So if you try to do an arpeggiator inside a machine and route it to, say, Contact or another plugin, it's just going to play that note when you hit the pad. It's not going to actually route it after the plugin. And that's, that's why a lot of chord and um, arpeggiator type plugins don't work in machine. But again, iPad to the rescue or iPhone. You don't need an iPad. If you got an iPhone, there's a lot of this stuff on there as well, and you're pretty much good to go. Now there's other there's other stuff. I'm gonna clear this out. Say you want a little bit more of a basic, you know, step sequence. You don't really need all this going on. There's other um, apps. So what I'm gonna do now is pull up one that that's really cool. I think this. How much is this? Like five bucks? A little yeah, bit. Four. Yeah, it might even two, be less. Three, yeah. Three, two, three dollars. Something, something crazy like that. So I'm gonna get rid of that. And now I'm gonna open up this one called Little MIDI. And it's a really basic, like, just looks like a little analog uh, step sequencer. So. And it's got tempo in there, right? And most of these, some of these actually, if you go into their settings, you can, you can kind of sync them if you go, if you look for the inputs. So I'm gonna look for the chord MIDI inputs. I'm gonna say clock in, and I don't really need note in. So I'm gonna say clock in, I'm gonna hook back up my input. And on the iRig MIDI, I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's, it's actually blinking on my input because it's receiving clock from machine. And I'll show you in machine, if you want machine to send this MIDI clock out, um, you go, to file, 
and right here where it says send MIDI clock, and that way it'll it'll sync, it'll machine will send its tempo um, data to whatever you have MIDI to it. So it it tends to fluctuate, so it kind of depends on what you're trying to do. Some of them, like I've noticed um, some apps, they kind of fluctuate when they re receive a MIDI clock from machines. So it's kind of a trial and error thing, but um, again, it's, it's another way to kind of keep things in sync. So we're going to see if this one actually is going to sync up for us or not. So you just pick your, your core MIDI input. Because as you can see, I can also use this stuff with any other apps. The same with the other apps I've showed. You can actually route those to other apps that you have on your iPad and just play it into the machine as audio as well. But I just wanted to kind of show the MIDI stuff. So we're going to see if this is going to sync with our um, tempo. Because right now it's at like 34. So I want to see if it syncs. So it doesn't look. Maybe I will see if it syncs. So this one was waiting for MIDI input to, to actually sync, but... And this one we've got more control. This, one, this one's more basic. As you can see, I haven't saved any presets in this one, so. But again, there's there's so many different ways that you can do that um, and record that that stuff directly into machine.